Hello, I'm Stuart Mitchell. I'm one of the lecturers in the History Department at the Open University, and I'm also a tutor on several of its modules. One way or another, I've been working for the Open University for almost 30 years, and one of the things that I like about it is that I get to teach people of all ages and from lots of different walks of life, many of whom wouldn't have the chance to go to a conventional bricks and mortar type university. As for history, it's fascinated me for, I guess, most of my life. When I started my career in the discipline, I was interested in the big national events that have helped to shape our world. So I specialised to begin with in British politics and economics during the 19th and 20th centuries. More recently, though, I've become a fan of local history. And that's a good job, really, because I chair the department's MA degree in local history. Now, I know that local history has this lingering reputation for being obsessed with tiny, arcane-type details, but it's not like that at all. In fact, it's interesting just because you can take those huge national events, like, say, the Industrial Revolution or the Two World Wars, and funnel down to look at how those things had a day-to-day -day impact on small communities. So it's really about people close up, how they genuinely lived and worked ate and drank, how they had fun, how they argued, how they forged relationships, how they built things and maybe dismantled them, and all of the other things that human beings do practically every day. And it's not devoid of argument and debate either. Actually, it's rather lively, because sometimes I find that what happened on that big stage didn't quite work out in the way that you'd expect on a local level. This type of history is exciting, in fact, because it allows us to add colour, and nuance to the big narratives of change, and sometimes to challenge them. Now, specialising in this kind of history also gives me the chance to look at sources and documents that are a bit, let's say, out of the ordinary. I'll give you an example. At the moment, I'm researching a piece of local history about my hometown, Brighton, in the post-war period, and in particular, I'm interested in what happened after the famous Mods and Rockers fights of 1964. Lots of stuff has been written about those riots, but very few people have examined how the community and the local authorities responded afterwards. Now I found this. Now, believe it or not, it's a typescript. It's a substantial report on a local youth club scheme, and it was set up after the riots to try and give young people something to do instead of throwing deck chairs at each other on the beach. Now, as you can see, that's a rather unusual source. I'm not saying that this setting up the, uh, the youth club was very effective because I haven't finished the research yet, and historians try not to prejudge their evidence. But I thought this was a rather different type of source to the usual newspaper stories and government reports, and one that's rather peculiar to local history. So I'm going to enjoy working with this, and I'm showing you it to give you an idea of some of the things that I do, and that we, as a department, do as historians. It's not all dates and battles, 